Okay, so I'm here to do a little video on how to do some ropes for your hobgrot. So as you can see, they have these kind of little ropes. The actual size of them is very small um, and it's very hard to get the details on, as you can see. But, you know, I'm not an amazing painter, never pretend to be. But I thought, you know what, I'll show my approach and see what you think. Okay, let's start off then by showing you the three colours. So I've got, plain and simply, the base Catagin Flesh, Contrast Wildwood and Scrag Brown. So obviously with Stormbringer you actually got this paint, so you've got uh, the starter paint if you just want to do the base at this stage. Uh, I'm going to start off by using a standard brush just to get the actual paint on there. Now, as always, I'm going to create a nice thin base coat that's well watered down and well thinned out. Now, I should actually uh, be really testing my skills right now and my ability to paint while looking through a camera. As you can see on this, uh, there are very, very small details. You have to be so careful. You can't just, you know, dip in and hope for the best because otherwise you're going to end up rolling over the previous colours that you've put on. You can see that this hobgrot is not quite fully along when it's painting. But he's definitely one of the easier models to demonstrate how to actually get these ropes done because he's um, not got as, you know, he's, he's widely spaced. As you can see, it gets very difficult getting into some of these tiny little details on them. You have to constantly, you know, flip the model. 360. Take a look at each angle. Check that you've got it. Your paint may be a bit streaky to begin with on something like this. Try not to worry about that because I'm going to kind of go back over it in a minute and then just kind of do a second layer. I was doing a few of these before where I didn't do a second layer of this. And when I put the, the contrast on, it just didn't work the way I wanted it to. You can see that on the underside it's very difficult to get to. Don't try and you know rush it, just gentle dabs. You can see I'm just trying to find angles that I can get my paintbrush into every single point on the miniature. Right then, okay.
just trying to take my time and not rush. Uh, part of the reason that I just go as slow as possible, you know, and just control my breathing really, is because what ends up happening is it slows my painting down so that the thing I painted first has started to dry. Right, okay, so what I've got there is my first layer on it. I've tried to be as careful as possible. As I said, I don't pretend to be a fantastic paint or a particularly steady-handed one. But you know what? I'm happy with the job I've done there. Now, my next aim is just to gently... Go back over everything one more time just to make sure that I have now got a solid background base coat. Now, oh, just a word of advice, you may be tempted to paint your, your hobgrots in batches. So you might be one of those people who will paint all of your, you know, all of your skin at once, all of your ropes at once. I'm, I am actually quite inclined to do that at times when it's line models, not so much with it champions. I don't put, tend to put champions on the... on the mill as it were um, but if you're doing it in batch wash your brush after each model so after each model wash your brush and then make sure it's nice and clean because even though I try and keep my brush wet the particles underneath will start to dry up And obviously, if you're doing a huge model, as we will be doing in a few weeks' time when that new um, new Stormbringer comes out, because obviously we're going to have chariots and all sorts to deal with. It's going to be awesome. Um, but you're going to be finding yourself painting a lot of wood, a lot of one colour, flat one colour. You're going to have to wash your brush all the time to keep it clean, to keep it fresh otherwise your brush is just going to start uh just falling apart on you and just and like i, I suppose I, I can't i don't really know what the true term is for it um but basically you can see i tried some batch painting a little earlier on with this brush and now it's kind of folding at the top it was very naughty of me that but I've also managed to start fixing it by treating it a bit better by twisting my brush gently, by teasing it gently. And as you can see, if you take care, you will restore your points. You start to restore your points. Um, don't ever be tempted to cut parts off a brush that are damaged. If you start doing that, you're gonna, you're basically gonna end up you know, wrecking them, you're going to make them shorter, fewer bristles. 
and they're not just going to work anymore. Okay, I have to admit this is one of my uh, major colours at the moment. <laughs> I'm, uh, it's, it's almost become my no oil. Um, it's a contrast. Now, you'll see that what I'm doing is I'm wetting it. What, then what I'm doing is I'm popping it on my wet palette so that it kind of becomes more of an ink than a contrast. And then what I do is I just very gently start pushing it into the recesses of the model. Now, what's happening here, hope you can see this, is that it's kind of washing downwards into those little gaps. This way, I'm creating all the kind of the, the shadow on the rope. All those little pieces of shading in the gaps along the edges. Uh, I do advise, you know, obviously, I know Stormbring is fresh and you might be, you know, wanting to paint as, um, as Games Workshop are advising, and that's fine. I mean, you can see, actually, I'm following very close to the Hogrot scheme. But I don't know if you're going to end up getting things like Contrast Wildwood in this pack. And I think, honestly, go get it. Go, go buy it. You know, go online, go buy it. Because it's a really great paint. It, it, it on grey. If you wash it over grey, it a light grey. It makes the light grey turn into a bronze and everything. It's really beautiful. It, it I just find it so useful. It can be put on um, things like trees. Uh, I find that it makes them look like a deep earthy wood, which is why it's called wild wood. Yeah, so they're very useful getting hold of contrast paints and starting to learn all how to use them. They're sometimes referred to as speed paints as well. Uh, and people also use them for a method called uh, the slap chop method, which, despite what people tell you, is not a magical way to paint miniatures fast and beautifully. Um, it's a way that if you already know how to paint miniatures, is a great way to paint miniatures fast and effectively. Okay, so there we go. Uh, that's that's the dark layer now put on. And that dark layer is going to take a little bit of time to dry, so I'm going to pause my video for a minute. Okay, so now that that's dried up a bit, it's time for the painful part, which is Scrag Brown. Now, the painful part about this, unfortunately, is you, you, <laughs> in order to try my best to get the kind of uh, rough effect basically keep the light on top of the rope and the dark below the rope i have to kind of do a, a difficult form of edge highlighting now this is this is how i'm working this i'm wetting my brush i'm getting my paint and then obviously i'm rolling out and twisting my brush and then i'm very gently doing this now the problem the reason that it, it's so exhausting is because as I'm doing it I've got to constantly twist well I have to twist the model so that my kind of combination of almost like a dry brush and a highlight It's just catching it. And of course, I have to kind of keep wetting my brush and rolling the paint out on it.
can see I'm having to twist it in all different directions so that I highlight just in the right place. And get exactly the detail that I want in the exactly where I want it. Ah. Now, because of the nature of this, what I find I have to do is I have to repeatedly wet my brush. But then I don't want my brush too wet when I start applying, the, you know, when I start grabbing hold of the paint because otherwise it'll wash. And again, I'm not trying to wash, I'm trying to highlight. And you can see, I mean, as I said, I'm not doing insanely amazing thing with my painting here, or at least I don't think I am. Sure, I've had, you know, decades of carefully learning how to hold a brush and position myself and things like that. But to be quite honest, I also have um, a quite serious bad back and aggressive fibromyalgia which is a horrible condition to have when you enjoy painting. Like I literally choose, I choose to be in agony. It's just so I can enjoy my hobby. Oh, right then. There we go. That is my three paint method of painting ropes. Hopefully you found it useful. Hopefully, you know, you're not looking at it and thinking it's terrible. I don't, I'm actually quite proud. Some of my other ones that I did look terrible. <laughs> so there we go. Um, my three paint, Katachan for the base, Wildwood Contrast for the kind of inking, the, the the shadows, as it were, and then Scrag Brown to pick out the highlights. I hope you found that useful. Please like and subscribe.